Greetings, Vault citizens. Johnny5 Alive here, your Vault Overseer, and welcome to an episode of Vault Tech Settlements Let's Build. And in today's video, we're going to be rebuilding Sanctuary, a little project that I guess I'm going to call for now Sanctuary Reborn. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, everyone, so this is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing on the channel so far. Uh, we've been doing the settlement spotlights. I decided it's time to do a little bit of a settlement. Let's build. So you'll, you guys will see some footage in the background. I got it running at six times speed. Let me know if that's too quick for you. We could slow it down for the next one. But I had about six hours of footage or something. I don't know, maybe three hours of footage, sorry. And I sped it up to six times to get it to a, a consumable half an hour video. So, uh, I got some figuring out to do and some tuning here. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to let the footage run and we're going to talk a lot about what's going on here and the process behind it and what we're going to do. So, I'm pretty excited about this episode and this Let's Build as well. First of all, I'm, this is a new process for me. I'm learning the game again. It's been like two or three years since I played Fallout 4, at least the settlement building aspect of it. So I'm, I'm learning the hotkeys, um, you know, testing the mods, and there's a lot of um, trial and error with the, this style of a let's build, including the video editing and all that stuff. Because as you guys can see in the background here, you see me scrapping everything. I just jumped into it and said, let's start, and I hit record. So I wasn't sure if you guys wanted to see the scrapping process or whatnot. Maybe I should have ran around and scrapped everything first, but I didn't, you know, I didn't want to make a mistake and start scrapping something because I want to scrap build scrap build I want to do things section by section so for this particular area I thought it would be good to include the scrapping and and that, that sort of a process and for people that are the Planet Coaster fans that aren't familiar with Fallout it lets you understand what's possible with this game as you can see I'm clearing out an area and then I'm gonna go build it up and it's it's quite cool to see the whole process so I'm definitely gonna keep it for at least the first video here um, and we'll see about the future videos. So let's talk about what I'm doing here and why. First of all, there's a lot, bunch of mods that are going to be necessary in order to make this all work. We'll go into the mod list in a sec, but I want to talk about kind of like the idea here. So when you first start the game, your first settlement that you encounter is Sanctuary. As you can see by these houses, they're kind of like broken. Some of them are actually just scrap heap, heaps. They've, they've collapsed. The, the roofs are all broken up and everything on the inside is in shambles. So you can see a lot of settlements rebuilt or mods online that kind of restore Sanctuary to its post or pre-war glamour. So everything's lush, there's green trees, there's um, all sorts of beautiful textures. Everything is pre-war, so nothing is touched. For me, that's a little bit lore breaking and immersion breaking. And I was trying to decide, what, what do I want to do for a bit? Let's build. I like the idea of doing like Sanctuary is like the only real suburban like residential area in the game. So what you guys saw with my fort Sanctuary, I turned it into a big fort. While that is cool, I kind of felt like I'm, there was a missed opportunity there. The one, I could have built a fort on any map, any settlement. And I just kind of felt like, you know, I didn't really take advantage of these houses as much as I could have. Which is a little bit unfortunate. I started contemplating in my mind, do I want to do post-war, pre-war? What would I do with these houses? And really, at the end of the day, I think the pre-war is just way too immersion-breaking. It'd be the only spot in the game world that's brand new and clean. And while you, you know, Sturges and the team that you bring back are working on a house to try to repair and revitalize everything, they're never going to get it back to the original state. Like... Like Codsworth said, nothing takes <laughs> nuclear fallout out of um, vinyl wood. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, and you, you can't polish a rusted car. So for me, you know, the pre-war state would never be possible, especially after the nuclear war. So kind of was like, all right, well, if I don't do that, like, how, what, what mods are available to me? And what, what can I do with this? Let's go over the mod list and what I'm using that are essential for rebuilding what you're seeing in this video, if you want to kind of redo it or do it yourself, what you're going to need. So the first mod that's most important is this, the scrap everything. And as you guys can see here, it allows me to literally scrap everything. I think there was one where I couldn't scrap it and I had to use a console command, which is just disable. If you find the odd thing that you can't scrap, you could just disable it with a console command. I only found like two instances of that in this um, settlement area. 
Uh, pretty much other than that, Scrap Everything allows you to delete everything, including the roads and the game world floor. So also save before you scrap everything and be careful with how you use it, because you can actually delete bits of the ground, which is definitely not good. Um, so definitely an essential mod there. Place Everywhere is a very essential mod as well. It uh, In this game, when you're trying to place something, you get the red outline, and it doesn't allow you to build where you want to. It can be very frustrating at times. This makes it so there's no more red. You can build, you can collide objects, you can push them into each other. There's no more collision and detection there. So it literally allows you to place everywhere, even place things in the sky with nothing supporting it. So it's a very good mod. It also allows you to move the workbench, move power armors. Um, there's special hotkeys that I'm going to get a little bit more into the building process and we'll do some let's builds, maybe even at real time. It, it allows you to adjust things just a tad with the keyboard just tap things over tap things up um, it also allows you to toggle the snap on and off so if you're having trouble like it's just snapping to something constantly and you don't want it to you can disable that and just nudge it into place and then there's also more hotkeys that we're going to be learning and using in the future episodes when we're going to really need them is like the rotate the scale you can make objects bigger and smaller so if you want to gigantic nuka cola bottle you can do that um, and then you can duplicate which i haven't quite tested out yet but I could imagine that function being very useful because in this game, if you put like a concrete block on the ground and stack a bunch of things on top of it, if you grab the concrete block, it grabs everything on top of it, kind of like Planet Coaster, how we used to, how we would normally group things into a block and then we would duplicate that as kind of like a, a little mini blueprint. So this game also does that. So I'm imagining if I make a prefab of a bunch of pieces on a block, I can duplicate it, move it, duplicate it, move it, which is going to be really good for making custom fences and all sorts of things. And then we have the increased build limit enhanced 4K. This basically allows you to have like 30 times the settlement size. It's amazing and you can do it as many times as you want. So you basically build unlimited and not worry about your part count. Um, building materials dispenser, it's very handy. It, you, there's two versions, one that's immersion and one that's basically cheaty. And the immersion one allows you to spend your caps on any material and they're all balanced to the game. Put your caps in and you get out materials and they're based off of vendor prices. So if you were to buy shipments of like metal from a vendor, they're the same from the dispenser. Then there's the cheaty version, which just gives it to you for free. Um, now there's two versions of this where you put the dispenser down, you run up to it and it puts it into your inventory. Then there's, if you go to the chem station, you can craft a hollow tape, which I have used. That way you could just open up your inventory, access it and just do it from there. It means I don't have to worry about running back to the dispenser anytime I need some more metal or something. So that is very good for this building mod because we want to we want the materials to do this. And then we got the um, home, Easy Home Builder post-war and post-war texture pack. Easy Home Builder is the one that you really want. And that's what is allowing me to build all these houses that you guys are seeing. They also have a modular version. So if you want to build every single wall, every roof piece, every interior wall, and you want to make your own custom houses, he's included everything, every single wall and unit size, just like in Planet Coaster. It's the same building kits. It's uh, modular units that all click together. Um, I'm using the pre-built houses and I also have a guide up on the other monitor that says what houses were used in the actual game. So I'm actually using the proper houses and, and in some cases I, I start to deviate from that. We'll talk about that in a bit. So that's really important that the Easy Home Builder makes this all possible. However, by default, everything is pre-war. It's shiny, it's brand new, it's super immersion breaking, um, but it's kind of cool for people who want to rebuild Sanctuary, kind of like The Sims, like make it look like a real <laughs> pre-war game that looks exactly like The Sims. So if that's something you're interested in, the Home Builder can do that too. However, I downloaded the, the add-on patch, which you download separately, and it changes all the textures to post-war. So everything still has that rundown look, but we don't have the collapse in roofs. We don't have windows caving in. We don't have like pieces of rebar sticking out. It's just properly constructed houses, They've been patched up, but are still grungy and covered in nuclear fallout. So um, it kind of gives you that feeling that the whole point of Sanctuary was to rebuild it, and they're trying to fix it. So it's like all the houses have been fixed, and but they're still, you know, rusted and, and, and they're covered in radiation and stuff. So I quite like that. And then the last one is I got more experience options 
uh, two times crafting. So this is basically gives me double EXP when crafting. And the reason for that is we're going to need things. We're going to need perks from the perk tree to do things. Um, certain items require science level five and this and that. So in order to access those items, we need to gain levels. But we don't want to go play the game for 10 hours to go get those levels because we're crafting. So two times EXP is not much, especially because you don't get too much crafting or EXP from crafting. But it's something. And because we're just building things like nonstop, we're placing so many things down that it we will accumulate to quite a bit of EXP. And we should be able to get the levels that we need from... Uh, from doing that so there you go guys that's all the mods i use the links will be down in the description below for all the mods if you want to go download that i have a ton more mods that we will be definitely using in later episodes but that's the ones that i'm using in this episode so everything that i just went through there you'll be able to do if you download those mods now in future episodes we're going to be able to do more complicated things we're going to need things like ocd decorator and, and etc etc so if you guys want me to make a video about my mod list currently i have 114 mods installed but not of all of them are settlement related um, i did a lot of changes so maybe if that's something you're interested in we can make a video explaining what mods i use for settlement building and we'll exclude all the character changes the armor changes and all the things that i just had fun and i couldn't resist downloading um, and I'll, I'll just make a mod covering like the essentials for building awesome stuff and uh, and if that's something you guys want to see let me know down in the comments below um, I'll, I'll see if I can put something together. So, let's go into the plan for this build. So, while settlement building is just a fun, creative, sim-like experience, there's actually a purpose in the game to having settlements. First of all, the most important one would be a crafting hub. It allows you to make all sorts of stuff in the game, armors, weapons, all sorts of things. You're going to need all your workstations to do so. And then, you have your storage and collectibles. So everything that you collect in the game, you're going to need an organized area to go store it, as well as to take things out to modify and craft. So crafting and storage go hand in hand. You're going to want to place a hub to uh, do all that. Most people stop there. They make their little storage area. They make their, you know, the crafting hub, and then they just kind of end it there. Everything else is bonus extra, but that extra stuff also serves a good purpose. So we have the trading emporiums where you can basically buy and sell anything from the game and then you have the armor emporiums which give you access to certain armors and if you have mods or dlcs there's some pretty cool armor in there that you can't craft by default so you're gonna have to buy stuff in the game and it's nice to have it all located in one central place then you have the weapons emporium and then that's all the weapons. Then you have restaurants, which is more or less like a fun little thing, but it gives you access to certain foods and chems and stuff like that. And then you have your surgery center, which is you always need a doctor in this game. And um, it, it's just something nice to have for buying stim packs and things. And then you have your um, clothing emporium, which gives you access to certain clothing, which mainly is only good for your companions and settlers. But if you're running like it, um, advanced companion mods that allow you to give them all t um, lots of different outfits it'll be nice to have a uh, clothing emporium so you bring all that stuff together and basically you have enough things to build you're going to need armor posts trading posts and it goes even further once you've upgraded and leveled them all to level three there's certain characters in the game that are very specialized for armors trading weapons etc that if you find them you can assign them to the level three post and it upgrades them to level four it's the only way to get a level four post in the game so it kind of adds to that level of like creativity and collection so it's very cool and so we put all that together and we're going to need to build all these different shops and things they're all going to have a purpose and a function so here with Sanctuary, I'm, I'm restoring the houses, but each one has a purpose. So as I mentioned earlier here, uh, I've basically gotten the models that the ones were in game. And the green house there that you saw me build is not the actual player house, it's a modified one. It was the one that was green, has a slightly different layout, but the, the creator of the mod added like five or six different variations of the player house. So while I want to restore it to kind of almost exactly how we saw it in the original game I want to make some Johnny 5 modifications I want to do some adjustments to make it cool because we're gonna need to we're, we have a pl an overall plan for this build and that plan is to turn these houses into kind of like forts ish <laughs> so the idea here is we're restoring sanctuary and then we're gonna build it up with 
post-war junk. <laughs> so it's going to be a junker town, but it's also going to be a sanctuary. And I really like this kind of hybrid idea because we're not going to be building forts on top of things, but we're going to rather be, we've restored the houses, we've built, we've fixed the collapse roofs, we've built all this stuff, but now we need material, like we don't have all, you know, we, we got to makeshift everything back together. And that's what's going to be so cool about this build is that essentially that greenhouse that you saw is going to be the armor emporium and the side of the garage is going to have like an armor shop built into it and the the person that works the armor shop is going to live in the house so it's going to be a giant garage sale <laughs> with junk outside of all the garages it's it's going to be really cool so i'm excited to kind of like give each one of the shops a unique look and feel but also kind of like amp the house up. So we're gonna take these houses and put them on steroids. It's gonna be quite fun. The green house that you saw me build there is gonna, the player character house that you start in is, is gonna become the armor emporium. The one next to it that was red, that was a modified house as well. I want to be the weapon shop. And then uh, I don't know if you guys saw me put a pink one down. Um, that's gonna become the clothing shop. So yeah, we're gonna do a little pink clothing house and we're gonna make it we're gonna dress it up all fancy And each one of these things are gonna have armor racks inside them weapon racks Clothing racks mannequins anything appropriate to said shop and we're gonna OCD dec decorate them and, and amp them up So every house is gonna have a theme from the signs out front to the signs inside to the decorations on the inside to the things that they're selling in the garage sale and all the junk cluttered around it and out front of it we're gonna we're definitely gonna theme every single house so that they all feel like a they have their own characteristics and what you see me building here is i decided he he put in a two-story house and i didn't really use that anywhere and i didn't see a purpose for it then i had an idea come to mind where uh the very first house what you see when you come into sanctuary should be a motel so I think a two-story house would be perfect for that. And it's actually the same size or model type as the single-story house that was supposed to be there. So we're really, we're only extending it, the, the, the height. It's the same house, it's just taller. And we'll, we'll it, right now it doesn't look like the prettiest two-story house. It's a little bit of a sore thumb. But once we put a motel sign on there and we cover it in lights and we, you know, do all sorts of fancy stuff to it, it'll really look like a unique place to come sleep and stay and we also need places for our settlers to live or you know sleep at and most of the houses in this area are going to become something special or unique i think there's 14 houses in sanctuary total so we're going to restore um as many of those as possible to something unique and i think i found like 10 ideas which leaves us with like four houses to store or, or to allow people to live at and sleep at um, other than the vendors, of course, having their own houses. But generally speaking, we're going to have residents and we're going to need them to stay somewhere. And I, I might come up with new ideas where I go, oh, what if I convert this house into like a combat place or a training facility or this or that? We'll get into it and we're going to have an, a, a special theme for all of them reserved for each of the houses. And then the ones that we have no ideas for, we're just going to make those regular residents. But I pretty much have a unique idea for everything. <laughs> so what else did I miss here? We have the surgery center, which you, I don't think you guys have seen me put down. I've been looking at my notes while the footage has been running, but I've been keeping an eye on it. But there's a white house that I end up placing down in the back, which is going to become our surgery center. You guys are seeing me delete the original yellow house. And my idea here was to, um, you know, I was thinking, okay, if we have a motel at the very beginning of Sanctuary, when you cross over the bridge, you know, you're going to want some sort of security office. So I was thinking, okay, Minutemen are the ones who brought us here. They're the first founders of this area and Preston Garvey and et cetera, et cetera. So why not make a Minutemen security, kind of like your Paladin security or whatever, but it's Minutemen. And I thought the Black House would be really cool for this because it's, it's just a strong color. It's It looks pretty grimacing, um, it, it's bold. And so I decided maybe, maybe I'll replace that original house with something unique and see how that goes. And I also like the fact that the garage came off the right side, which allows us to put a patio there with all sorts of turrets, defense systems, so when the raiders come over the bridge for the first time and they're going to hit the motel first and foremost and kill of all, all of our residents, <laughs> there's paladin security waiting there on a balcony with guard posts and turrets and they just annihilate them. So I thought that would be a pretty cool idea there. 
So it's definitely one of the houses that I wanted to actually replace for a completely new model. However, you guys will see me, you know, I'm looking at it, comparing it to the blue house here, trying to decide which one would be better. And the thing I didn't like about the black house is the driveway didn't meet up with the, the curb. So it's just a slight little immersion breaking thing. Like, why does this driveway drive right over the grass? Like, why is there no proper curve or concave going from the sidewalk to the house? And, um, you know, that was bugging me a little bit. So I decided I'll, I'll just, I'll try a different model house that has the garage on the left side. And then I'll build the, the, the driveway properly. But this house is the one unique house that also has a door coming out the right side. Which means we can actually put a double carport on it. We can have one on the left and one on the right. But the one on the right will end up becoming our defense balcony. And so there we go, our, our Minutemen security is going to be a blue house, but we could still add colors and stuff like that to it. And one of the most unique things that uh, the developers of Fallout have talked about it is one of the things that made Fallout 4 stand out compared to like 3 and, 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 and the, the grimness of New Vegas is the color pops. So when you build these big giant junkyard areas or like, for example, um, the the D what is it called Diamond City? They have lots of popping greens and little bits of red, and that paint and that color really makes an area pop. So I'm keeping all those kind of things in consideration when I'm building this town. I don't want it all to just be blue blue like it was when you saw it. I think there might have been a couple of yellow houses as well, but when you first start off the game, pretty much every house in Sanctuary is perfect blue, perfect mint, you know, mint condition, hedges out front, they're all exact same um, with a couple yellow ones. We want some variation, we want some color pop in there, like the red house being the weaponsmith, there's little pops of red, and we put a big turret on top or a giant weapon, or some sort of like um, ar arm arms on the top of the house. It's gonna and we're gonna add a little bits of colors on the roof as well and like maybe a big red sign that says weapons That's gonna be your color pop You're gonna see the little bits on the the house as well as on top And then you're gonna see a bunch of wood and different things and, and stuff that we built on top of it To kind of like bring it all together and, and kind of fortify it and make it look unique so every single house we want a different style of kind of fort building or you know garage area and um, we want certain colors and, and items to accentuate all that. So I'm keeping all this stuff in mind as I'm building up. And I'm I, like I said, I, at the beginning of this, I was just going into it and like, let's, let's start off by just scrapping everything and putting down the new rebuilt houses that are much better, um, but still post-war. Post we just want to clean Sanctuary up. And as I'm doing it, I got a lot of time to think and kind of let my brain run ideas through. And as I'm looking through the different houses that you know you can build and the variations of the houses you can build, like this model that I'm putting down, the White House, is actually the proper house that's supposed to go there. But the one that's supposed to go there is the exact same with a blue texture. So there's a white variation. And I thought this is gonna be perfect for a medical place. We could blue put, put touch, touches of red paint on there as well as white. And it's gonna look like a little hospital or surgery house. And then we'll put like a big um, red cross on the front, you know, different things like that. So, you know, as I'm looking through the different house prefabs, I'm coming up with the ideas. Oh, what kind of, what could this be based off the color options available without breaking the originality of the sanctuary setup? We want things to be as vanilla as possible um, with some variation and you know, custom touches in there. So the, the big deviants are the player house being green and slightly different layout. The house, the two houses in front of Sanctuary when you first enter, um, the first, the one to your right is actually the player house. So I did get to reuse that somewhere in, in Sanctuary and I really did want to reuse the original house and have it somewhere. So that was the idea behind that. And then the one to the left is a two-story house, which you wouldn't see either. Um, and then the last building I end up placing down is um, also 
kind of a remake, but that's because I have something very special in mind and I needed like a back door or a back porch because I want to make like kind of an entertainment place out back. So we have an idea for each one of these buildings and what we're going to do with them, but then we have extra stuff that we can do with mods. So we have a few mods lined up that we're going to be using for this. One um, is, is a markers mod. I, I have to look up the name. I'll definitely be talking about it when we get to that episode. But essentially allows you to put animations into your game and assign settlers to them. So you can have boxing or combat arenas where people fight and a guy comes up and rings a gong and they, they scrap it out. So I think that's perfect for Kate because Kate comes from the combat zone. and She's a really rugged companion character that she just likes to fight and do drugs. Um, so it, she's a pretty hardcore intense character. And I thought, well, what if we build her her own house that's like Kate's combat arena and she has a boxing rink out front and she's the one that rings the gong and she's in charge of her like she's got a fight club at kate's fight club we'll come up with these names as we go guys but i think that could be something that we convert one of the houses into and we could put all sorts of cool signage and boxing gloves out front and different things and, and make it really feel like a fight club there's also shooting ranges i think this might be kind of cool for outside the minutemen headquarters or security office like preston garvey's sh training range or something like that there's also a, a singer pack where a like a girl will literally walk up to a microphone and sing and her lips link lip sync to every song in the game that's uh sung by a female and it'll only play the female songs if you put a f female singer up and it'll only play the male songs if you put a male singer up so characters will walk up they'll take shifts at entertaining and they'll start singing and you can put speakers up and it's also an attraction point so settlers will come up and you know kind of cheer on the singer but with the an uh, animation markers you can actually add in dancing animations so if you put them in that area they'll walk up they'll watch the person sing and they'll start dancing along so i think this black host that i'm putting down i wanted to use that black house somewhere it's going to be kind of like our nightclub slash restaurant so it's going to be a restaurant maybe a nuka cola restaurant or something we'll put touches of red in there um and then out back there'll be um, a stage where somebody's singing and we have like a little dance area we'll do something pretty cool with that and then there's also training posts for you know making people exercise and that's something that we can consider however i don't think i'm going to use everything but that's the whole idea here is um, we're going to have like proper clothing surgery restaurants weapons armor trading and, and storage and crafting. The storage and crafting hub will be the center house that you are used to seeing. Sturge's house, I suppose. The main yellow house that's centralized. And the idea here is I'll show you guys some footage here um, to end off the episode. Some real-time footage of the rebuilt sanctuary. I want everything to be centralized. So the red house is close to the green house, which is close to the yellow house, which is our trading emporium. And then the yellow house adjacent to that is our crafting hub slash storage house. And then just to the right of that, we have our uh, clothing emporium. And then over next to that, you have your medical bay. So everything you need is centralized. So you're not running back and forth all the way downtown. Everything is in the center and all the stuff on the outskirts at the very, very backs is going to be, you know, things that we don't need to go to very often. It's going to be our residence, our bonus stuff, companion housing, our fight club, things that you might want to go visit and check out, but you don't need to run to to do anything. Everything that you need is centralized. And I think this is actually going to turn out to be a very cool thing. And we've, we're layering it up, guys. So we've restored the houses. We've kind of come up with what we're going to do. We've got the houses rebuilt. Everything is clean. And uh, we're ready to basically start the next layer. So the next process will be kind of, we could probably do them one by one. Maybe I'll build up the motel first or the security office. And I'll, I'll try testing them out. And we'll do the residence very, very last, I think. We'll, we'll try and hit up each let's build will essentially be like, let's build an armory. Or let's build a... Um, a restaurant or let's build a medical clinic and I'll be decorating and going through all the different assets required to do that boom so there you go guys lots of information there that's the end of this video let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoy please be sure to smash that like button if you're new to the channel subscribe for more daily videos and if you would like to support the show because you enjoy the content and the videos you could do so by becoming a patron Everyone, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.